Good day and welcome to the ORMAT Technologies Corporate Update Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Ms. Mary Sagal of MS Hayden IR. Please go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the ORMAT Technologies Investor Call to discuss its equity investment transaction. My name is Mary Segal, and I'm with MS Hayden IR, the new Investor Relations Council to ORMAT. Hosting the call today are Isaac Angel, Chief Executive Officer, Doron Blacar, Chief Financial Officer, and Smadar Lavi, Vice President of Corporate Finance and Investor Relations. Before beginning, we would like to remind you that the information provided during this call may contain forward-looking statements relating to current expectations, estimates, forecasts, and projections about future events and are forward-looking as defined in the Private Securities Litigation Reform Act of 1995. These forward-looking statements generally relate to the company's plans, objectives, and expectations for future operation and are based on management's current estimates and projections, future results, or trends. Actual future results may differ materially from those projected as a result of certain risks and uncertainties. For a discussion of such risks and uncertainties, please see risk factors as described in our Math Technologies Annual Report on Form 10-K filed with the SEC on February 28, 2014. Before I turn the call over to management, I would like to remind everyone that a slide presentation accompanying this call may be accessed on the company's website at ormat.com under the Investor Relations tab. With all that said, I would now like to turn the call over to Isaac. Isaac, congratulations on this important transaction. The call is yours. Thank you very much, Mary. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us to discuss this important milestone. We will start with slide number five. Earlier today, we announced that we signed an agreement with Northleaf Capital Partners, a leading independent global private equity, private equity and infrastructure investor. Under the agreement, OMAT will contribute certain geothermal and REC power plants into a newly established joint venture. Northleaf will acquire approximately 40% equity interest in the joint venture for $175 million. We view this as a powerful opportunity to monetize our portion of our assets, a portion of our assets, at an attractive multiple, significantly higher than our current trading multiple. Before I turn the call over to Doron to discuss the specifics, the specifics of the transaction, let me briefly speak on the strategic rationale and key benefits for Ormat and its shareholders. First, the transaction enables Ormat to monetize selected assets at a premium compared to our current trade, trading valuation and their book value. We firmly believe this premium underscores the value of our assets and is a vote of confidence for experience and track record. Second, the significant cash received from this sale of minority interest will meaningfully improve the company's capital structure, fund internal and external growth, and will enable us to pay off higher cost debt. We were able to create significant liquidity by accessing global institutional investors. Finally, this new relationship has the potential for further collaboration. Northleaf is a highly respected global private equity and infrastructure manager with more than $6 billion under management and many years of experience. Our partnership allows for additional expansion of our joint venture assets. I'd like to, ter to turn the call over to Doron to discuss the details and the financial implications. Mr. Blachard. Thank you, Isaac, and thank you, everyone, who joined us for this call. As Isaac said, we view this agreement as an important event, underscoring the values of our assets and validating our ability to monetize assets via equity investor channels. This monetization will help fuel our continued growth and success. 
Let me walk you through the details of the transaction, starting with slide 7. Slide 7 provides an overview of the transaction. First, went to the agreement, new entity company, OLPD, which we refer to as the joint venture, will own 100% of two geothermal and nine power plant units across three recovered energy generating assets. Including in this are the Puna Geothermal Power Plant in Hawaii, the Don Campbell Geothermal Power Plant in Nevada, and three reg assets known as OL1, OL2, and OL3, located in North and South Dakota, Montana, and Minnesota. In total, the joint venture will own 106 megawatts out of approximately 650 megawatts that comprise our fleet. The, jo the joint venture expected annual re revenue for 2014 to account for approximately $76 million. Turning to slide 8, Northlet is entitled to 40% of the joint venture's economy for a purchase price of $175 million. This represents a value of $438 million, assuming the transaction will be closed at the end of February. The purchase price is subject to upward adjustment based on the closing date of the transaction. Additionally, the percentage interest to be acquired by Nokia is subject to adjust adjustment based on the Canadian dollar versus the US dollar exchange rate. In the event of such an adjustment, the implied valuation of 100% of the assets would not change, but the profit to amount would be adjusted based on the percentage interest north it acquired. Under the transaction agreement, 100% of the cash generated by the portfolio operations will be distributed, subject to reasonable reserves taking into account future investment and other capital needs. Distribution is according to agreed allocation rules providing for preferred distribution either to OMA or to Northlift based on the actual avoided cost under the Puna 25 megawatt power purchase agreement. Essentially, we negotiate a structure which provides security and mitigates risk for Northlift while giving OMA the upside opportunity at pricing increase. We believe this arrangement in a volatile global energy market and commodity pricing offers a win-win solution for both parties. OMAC, as a 60% owner, will continue to control and operate the power plants included in the joint venture. This transaction is expected to close in the first quarter of 2015, pending fulfillment of certain standard closing conditions. From an accounting perspective, this structure should have no material impact on OMAC's consolidated results. Slide 9 describes the financial implications. OMAT will consolidate the joint venture. Based on US gas, and since OMAT continues to control and operate the assets, no profit will be recognized in the PLM. Instead, the book profit will be recorded in equity as additional paid in capital. From tax perspective, due to the NOL the PTC that OMAT has, we don't see any tax implications. Turning to slide 10, our plan for the use of proceeds is to support our growth and repay high cost debt. In slides 11 and 12, we address the transaction valuation. The valuation of 40% interest in the joint venture for $175 million implies a total enterprise value of $438 million. The enterprise value of the joint venture is valued at approximately 11.3 times the joint venture estimated 2014 adjusted EBITDA and 10.7 times the, the joint venture estimated 2015 adjusted EBITDA. The joint venture adjusted EBITDA is calculated as net income before interest tax, depreciation and amortization, and is adjusted for cash payment under the full net Adjusted EBITDA is not a measurement of financial performance or liquidity under US gap. Adjusted EBITDA is presented because we believe it is frequently used by securities analysts, investors, and other interested parties in the evaluation of the company's ability to serve debt or incur debt. However, other companies in our industry 
may calculate and adjust the EBITDA differently than we do. On slide 12, you can see from the graph that the valuation of this transaction is in line and better with other contracted generating asset transactions, mainly solar and wind power plants. The valuation of the joint venture represents a premium when compared to our current market valuation. With that complete, I will now turn the call back to Isaac to discuss the benefits related to our shareholders' value. Isaac? Thank you, Doron. Turning to slide 14, in collaboration with our banker UBS, we undertook a significant effort to identify the right partner for this initiative. Let me state that we couldn't have found a better, more experienced, more ideally aligned partner than Nortliff, and we are very excited to start what we anticipate will be a long and mutually productive relationship. I will also state that there were a number of excellent potential partners, including global pension and infrastructure funds, who were considered. The result of this process was a robust valuation and ideal structure for Armat and its shareholders. As Zoran described, this transaction will result in a significant amount of capital which we can redeploy to continue our growth initiatives, both organically and throughout m and Ultimately, the success of this transaction should enable additional transactions, where and appropriate in the future. This transaction will benefit, will benefit of our, of our, all our shareholders, employees, and stakeholders. We are excited and looking forward to working with our new partner, Nordleaf. Before I open the call for questions, I would also like to provide a brief update on the transaction to acquire parent company stocks. As we previously announced, the company's board of directors decided to list our shares on two international stock exchanges. Today, the Tel Aviv Stock Exchange approved the listing of, of, of company's common stock to start trading on February 10, 2015. We will remain subject to the rules and regulations of the New York Stock Exchange and of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. We expect to complete the share exchange between the parent company and Ormat Technologies on February 12, 2015. With that, I would like to thank you for your support and ask the operator to open the call for questions. Operator, please. Thank you. If you would like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star 1 on your telephone keypad. If you are using a speakerphone, please make sure your mute function is turned off to allow your signal to reach our equipment. Again, that's star 1 to ask a question. And we'll pause for just a moment to allow people the opportunity to signal. And we'll take our first question from Dan Manis of Avondale Partners. Uh, good morning, everyone, and congratulations on uh, getting this transaction done. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Um, a couple quick questions. First, um, as it relates to the, the the EBITDA multiple, I guess the the nearly 11 times, that seems to imply just shy of 40 million of EBITDA at the plant level. Um, how how can we reconcile that with with your consolidated EBITDA? Uh, for example. How much, if any, corporate level SGNA is being allocated, or is this almost more similar to the plant level gross profit excluding DNA? Just as I think through, um, you know, how to extrapolate these numbers. Hi, Dan. It's uh, Doron. This is uh, mainly related to the plant uh, gross profit. So there's, there should be very little corporate SGNA that's that's being attributed to the JV. There is some uh, GNA expenses, uh, but again, it's not uh, the, these are not uh, standalone entities uh, with full uh, scale GNA. But uh, everything that supports the operations, it's even if it's a GNA, it's there. Uh, but it's not uh, all GNA of the company. Got it. The second thing is, can you give us a little bit more color on how the um, I guess the variable payment on, on Puna works. Is there a specific kind of strike price on a dollar per megawatt hour basis whereby, you know, you pay them if, if the, the, the market goes below and, you know, you get anything above? Can you maybe walk through that in a little more detail? Yes. Uh, 
basically uh, what we've uh, agreed with them, uh, and obviously this is a, a process that started uh, way back last year, we agreed with them on a set of, uh, a price of PTA pricing for the 25 uh, on peak and the 22 megawatt off peak, uh, and that was the base uh, for the transaction uh, valuation. Uh, any price uh, above that, uh, we get the cash. Any price below that, they uh, get the uh, uh, preferred distribution. And it, that price level that's set, was that set based on current prices or? That, that, that was set, uh, and I, don't, I can't say exactly the right time, but somewhere uh, in the middle of last year, or the, 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 the second half of, uh, of last year. Um, and uh, basically, when you do transactions with financial investors, uh, uh, the risk of a commodity or volatile or in this volatile environment uh, is not something that they can take. So basically, we were able to negotiate with them a, a win-win uh, situation where basically we get the upside if pricing goes up, and we uh, mitigate the risk if pricing goes down. Okay. Um- on Puna, you still do have the lease. I assume you're including the um, the lease payment, which I want to say is is, um, is eight million bucks a year. That's uh, embedded in the EBITDA. So if it, if we looked at it from an EBITDA basis, it might even be another eight million higher. Yes, yes, they okay. assume the they assume the the lease uh, payment as part of the transaction. So uh, uh, obviously, if you look and uh, the EBITDA, uh, the, the lease payment team, then you need to see how you look into the liability of the lease. Got it. Uh, two more. Uh, when you looked at, at this transaction, were these all of the assets that were contemplated, or are there others that might make sense for this type of transaction? <coughs> well, uh, I think, uh, these are the assets uh, that are, are available or eligible uh, at this time or when we started the process uh, for this kind of transaction on the other assets where we have tax equity or are uh, subject to already uh, in process financing, uh, they, they weren't available for this kind of transaction. But I mean, it, but structurally, are you set up that, for instance, as some of the tax equity, you know, transactions wind down, or as some of the project financing is paid off, could you do more of these types of transactions going forward? Yeah, it's an option. It's you know, it's the first uh, transaction that uh, that we did. Uh, I think it's also the first geothermal uh, such kind of transaction that is, that is happening. So uh, it's obviously a platform. Uh, North Lake is a long term. A fund uh, that continues to get uh, uh, cash to deploy, so it's all, always an option to add assets to this or do a parallel one. Great, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as a reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star one. And we'll move to our next question from Jinming Liu of Ardor Capital. Thanks for taking my question. And the, um, just for um, the proceeds of uh, $175 million, uh, well, that uh, those uh, that proceeds will be kept within the joint venture, or you can uh, use freely for uh, to repay that really to any other uh, assets you have. It's gonna it's gonna move to the to the company upstairs. It's not gonna be in the joint venture, and will be used as we we. We find fit by the company, of course. Okay. Um, for the future profit within the GV, uh, what I mean, I'm mean, trying to understand whether North Leaf will just take simply each year get 40% of the profit uh, from the GV, or you will have special dividend policy set up for, uh, to distribute cash generated from uh, those assets. It's a simple dividend. We will we will distribute all the profits of the joint venture as they occur. We will keep part of it for O and M or the future capital expenditure, and everything else will be distributed for the sixty. Okay, got that. And the uh, just uh, uh, to follow up with uh, that question. 
it looks like to me that the, uh, most of your tax equity uh, structure will uh, end it. Well, the, uh, well, and the, uh, within 2015, uh, out of the your all uh, other assets, once the uh, tax equity uh, structure is over, how many of uh, or how many megawatts of your power plants uh, can be freed up for you know uh, this kind of uh, financing arrangement? Okay. Right. Since they're all, um, I think the tax equity actually rolled up uh, in 16, not in not in 15. Um, and we can come back to you with the exact number. I don't remember off the top of my head how many megawatts uh, free up, but uh, it's a significant amount. Okay, got that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> and as another reminder, if you'd like to ask a question, please signal by pressing star 1. And as we have no further questions, I'd like to turn it back over to our speakers for any additional or closing remarks. No closing remarks at this stage. Thank you very much for your continued support, and have a nice day. Bye-bye. And that does conclude today's conference. Thank you so much for joining us.